Hey, this is Tabiso Kalashayo. Can you please help me with these questions here? And this, that other one. For now, we're going to check out Tabiso's question. Let's have a look at it. It says, the following percentages represent the mathematics results of 10 grade 12 learners in the June examination. Okay, so there are 10 percentages here, and this is how grade 12s did in their maths. Firstly, it says calculate the average percentage for this group of learners. So I'm going to be lazy and do the calculator thing because the moment you see average, you're probably going to be asked to calculate standard deviation, and that's where your calculator comes in handy. So you press mode or setup, two for stats, one for variance because we only have one kind of variable here and you enter in each data point followed by an equals. So you say 43 equals and you enter in the next set. So 70, 55, 60, 85, 92, 65, 62, 75, and 58. And what's handy is you can see how many numbers you've inputted over here. So we know we have 10 data points. If you haven't reached 10, you've missed something. So now you press AC, which means that all of your data is stored in the calculator. And now to work with it, you say shift, one for stats. And because we're looking for mean, which is a type of variance, you press four for variance. And the mean is given by that X bar over there. So you say two and equals. And the mean is 66,5%. Easy peasy. Now it says, do you think that this average is a good measure to characterize the performance of the entire group of grade 12 learners at the school? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so if we look at this, we've got 66,5% as the average. But if you look, we've got a range from 43% all the way to 92%. So if I say on average the matrix did 66.5%, that really doesn't account for the fact that some learners did really badly and might need help, and other learners did really well and are not being given credit for that example. So I would say that no, it is not a good measure. Why? Because there is a lot of variance which means there is like a big difference between the different marks the matrix got. There is a large variance in the matrix marks. And the mean, or you could say average, gives no indication of the spread. Okay, so we're basically just averaging out the matrix and saying they got an average of almost 67%, when in actual fact, they're ranging from 43 to 90, which is a big variation. Okay, so thirdly, it says uh, use a calculator to determine standard deviation. See, I knew it. So now we go back to our calculator, press shift one again for stats. Four for variance because standard deviation is still a variance explanator. And we say three because remember, standard deviation is given to us by sigma. So three equals, and we get a standard deviation of 13,78. I'm going to round to two decimal places. And that is the standard deviation. So now lastly, it says determine the number of learners whose percentages lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so now, remember guys, in these stats questions, I can't draw this enough. Whenever you see the one standard deviation within the mean, a lot of you guys don't account for how this distribution works. You know, you have like your generic bell curve, you have the mean smack in the middle, and then on either side is a standard deviation, which is basically saying where the majority of the data is clumped around the mean. Okay, so a lot of you guys, you see, okay, one standard deviation within the mean, you take the mean, and you look at just that interval or just that interval. You don't account for the fact that there is a standard deviation on either side of the mean. You need to account for both intervals. Okay, I'll draw this out and show you what I mean. So if we have our standard distribution, this is normal distribution, remember? In the middle is the mean, and then on either side 
is where the majority of the data is clumped and that is one standard deviation below the mean or mean minus one standard deviation and here is one standard deviation above the mean. So when they say within one standard deviation of the mean, they mean from both sides. This distance here would be sigma. And so with this distance, they are both one standard deviation. So you need to find two different options. You need to say standard deviation below the mean and a standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so that's going to give us, we found that the mean was 66,5. So we have 66,5 plus the standard deviation, which is 13,78. I'm going to say minus first, minus 13,78. And that's going to give us 52,72. And then if we say above the mean, you can just sneakily press the back arrow, delete the minus sign and add in a plus sign. And we're going to get 80 comma 28. So basically we're trying to find how many learners sit in this interval over here. Okay, so we're looking from about 53% to 80%. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven learners that sit in that interval. So you would say seven learners. Okay, so remember with the standard deviation, they're going to be looking, when they give you this kind of question, they're going to be looking that you've made these calculations and then come to a conclusion as to why there are seven learners that sit within one standard deviation.